so excited to have you for another week. Last week, we discovered how the one had us in mind before we create, he created the earth. Do you remember the key verse for last week? Ephesians 1 verse 4. Before he laid down the earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love to be, to be made whole and holy through his love. How amazing is that? It totally blows my mind how the one who created the heavens and the earth had me in mind. Okay, I mean, I'm a good person and a kind person, but why would he choose to save me? Why would he choose to save us? What type of value do I have? We're going to answer this question later on. But before we do that, let's have some time in worship. So I'll see you guys all later. Enjoy your time of worship with them. Welcome back everyone. It's Christy Leo. Last week we said that in this series we want to speak about why we worship. And today we are going to chat about why we are lifting our hands while we are worshiping. If I have to ask this question to you right now, what would you say? Some of you are maybe saying that you see your parents lifting their hands in church and that is why you are doing it. Or maybe it's something very new to you or even a little strange to you. But let me help you to understand this better. The Bible is full of verses, especially in Psalms, where we read that we should lift our hands when we worship. Psalm 63 verse 4 says that I will worship you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. Lifting our hands is surrendering to God. It is acknowledging that He is our King, our Savior, and that we trust Him with everything. When we lift our hands, we surrender everything inside of us. All the good stuff, all the bad stuff, all our problems, we surrender everything. As we enter into a time of worship today, I want to challenge you to lay down everything that's weighing on you. And especially, if you want to give your life to Jesus, lift up your hands and surrender your life to Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can worship you. We want to ask that you will come and lay on our hearts what we should surrender to you. As we enter into this time of worship, come and lead us and give us joy to worship you wholeheartedly. Amen.
the world and we shine for you, Jesus. Bible days, 
they didn't contribute as much to society, so they were looked down upon. In today's Bible story, we're going to hear about a situation with Jesus, children, parents, and a crowd. Hmm, that sounds like a lot of drama, but let's see what our avatar of the one has to say. Hello there, all you fearfully and wonderfully made chosen ones. Jesus again. I am so excited to see you again. Today I want to share another one of my awesome experiences while I was on earth. This was one of my favorite things to do. I love to spend time with children. Remember, they, meaning you, are made in my image and what a fabulous job I did, don't you think? Anyway, I do not want to give away the whole story. So let's just say, children have an incredible special place in my heart. And you guessed it, that includes you. Check out what happened. Hello there, my Bible digging friends. It is so great to see you. My name is Sia for those of you who are joining us for the very first time in this series. I am going to be telling you the Bible story for this week with a little inside scoop inside. In this section, we are going to dive deep into the Bible so that we can understand some nuggets about the Bible even better. Well, I have yet another amazing Bible story about the life of Jesus here on earth. So let us dig in. Our Bible story for today is found in Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. It's only a small event of about four verses where Jesus was teaching some adults. Well, it wasn't just a small event. It was like a whole lot of adults. It was kind of like a, an arena or a concert at an arena setter. So that is a lot of people. Well, the Bible simply calls it a crowd. Ah, uh, no big deal. Uh, well, it was a massive, massive deal because it shows us how important young people or children are to Jesus. It shows us how important you are to Jesus. So, to my side, I think these four verses are really a massive, massive part because they show us the heart of Jesus for children. So, let us jump right in. Jesus and his disciples had been traveling through a lot of cities on their way to Jerusalem. And everywhere they went, the crowds would gather around and wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Of course, who wouldn't want to hear what Jesus had to say? He is just like the one. Because Jesus loves people, he would always stop and teach the people and all the crowds about God's love and God's kingdom. Now, in this particular time, Jesus was busy teaching a crowd of adults some grown-up stuff. When some parents kind of interrupted Jesus by bringing their children along so that he can lay a hand on them and speak a blessing over them. But listen to what happened. So, he, his disciples suited them away. I can imagine someone like Peter saying, Excuse me, do you know who this is? We do not have time to play with your children. This is the Messiah. Leave Jesus alone. He has very important work to do. Excuse me. <laughs> Dear old Peter, you got to love this guy. So passionate about Jesus, but always tactful with people. So I guess you can tell me what Jesus did. Yes, the Bible tells us that Jesus was, let's just say, not impressed at his disciples for shooting the kids away. So Jesus turned to his disciples and said, I must quote this from the Bible. Do not push these kids away. Let them come to me. Don't ever get between them and me. These kids are at the very center of life in the kingdom. Wow, Jesus really felt strongly about this. Oh boy, wait, there's more. Jesus then turned to the crowd and he said, Listen to me, unless you accept God's kingdom like a little child accept things, you will never enter it. Say what? Whoa. So Jesus was telling adults that if they do not accept 
the kingdom of God like a little child accepts things. They will never enter it. Wow. That must have really, really turned a few heads. After that, Jesus turned to the parents and children, sat down and scooped up the children in his arms, laying hands on them, praying over them and speaking a blessing over their lives. I can just imagine Jesus looking at the children in their eyes, knowing all their names and telling them wonderful things of who he has made them to be and telling them to go and be those people that he has made them to be and go and represent him well. Oh man, I really, really love Jesus. Imagine that. A lot of people will just read over these lines because it's just about children. Well, not to Jesus. Every single one of those kids uh, was so important to Jesus because he loved them with an indescribable, never-ending love, just as much as he loves you with more than words could ever express. And to just go a bit further, it is not just about love. Jesus placed a high value on children, even when society did not. To Jesus, everyone, all people, big or small, was worth Jesus giving his life for. So I am going to leave you there for this week. Wow, guys, I guess that answers our question for today. God sees us as valuable and he puts worth to our lives. So as the verse says today, Psalm 127 verse 3, Children are God's love gift. It's heaven's generous reward. So remember, doesn't matter how big or how small you are, you are valuable and you are worthy. So guys, as we have discovered, Jesus chooses us. How amazing is that? Now I have a question for you. Do you choose Jesus? You see, sometimes in life we have to make decisions. Are we going to go right or are we going to go left? See, some people might be going to the left. Are we going to follow them? Are we going to follow God and go to the right path? Jesus helps us and guides us. He's the guide of our life, which will lead to restored relationships instead of destruction. So today, you have to make the decision. Are you going to choose Jesus? Because he's already chosen you. If you want to choose Jesus, then pray this simple prayer with me. Thank you, Father God, for everything you do for us. Thank you for coming into our lives. And today, Jesus, I choose you. How? Please help me and guide me and help me to make the right decisions in life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, guys, what an incredible moment. If that was the first time that you prayed that prayer, why don't you go tell someone about the best decision that you have ever made? Okay, guys, I can't wait to see you next week for another jam-packed episode. Remember to check out the fun activities in the link below, and I can't wait to see you next week. Bye!